There's a good chance that whilst you're watching this video, your head will be tilted forward slightly and your neck will be pushing forward as well. And that's what's commonly referred to as forward head posture. And in this video, I'm gonna be talking about how that can impact your hiking and climbing, both the performance and your enjoyment of it. And on top of that, I'll be sharing a little daily routine of exercises that you can implement to fix the problem. Let's get into it. So welcome or welcome back to the channel. My name is Chase. I'm a strength and conditioning coach with a keen interest in hiking and climbing. And recently I've been particularly interested in long distance hiking and how it affects the body. The idea for this video came about while I was editing footage and I noticed that in a lot of the shots I had this really horrific forward head posture and it was terrible to look at. So when I got home from the hike, I decided I needed to do something about it. And that's how this video began. And there's a lot of good reasons to identify and rectify this posture. Aside from the fact that it just doesn't look very nice, it's also known to have a negative effect on our physical and mental health. The link between posture and mental well-being now is pretty well documented. One of the key studies was the Amy Cuddy study, which has been refuted and then restudied a number of times. But if you're interested, you can look into that. In terms of how posture affects our performance, unfortunately this isn't something that's studied very heavily, but I have a hunch <laughs> that the two are heavily intertwined. And one interesting statistic I found was that forward head posture can limit our lung capacity by up to 30% in some of the worst cases. So you can imagine how that could affect both hiking and especially climbing if you're at altitude. But one of the main reasons why I really decided to focus a lot of my own training around improving my own posture after this trip was because of the potential that it has to create other injuries in the body. You might not think that the position of your head has a lot to do with how you hike, but it really does. The body is designed to compensate for everything. We're really just a series of links in a chain. And when one thing moves forward, we need something else to counterbalance this. So an injury to your calf muscle, for example, could actually be caused by the forward head posture. So hopefully that's enough to convince you that something like this is worth rectifying and putting in a little bit of time on a daily basis to improve upon. So what can we actually do about it? Well, the first thing is just simply to be aware of it. Now, this is a difficult thing to do. Often when we look to the side of ourselves in the mirror, we automatically adjust or it's just really difficult to see our own posture. So a lot of the time people don't notice that they have poor survival posture until they see a photo of themselves. So that's the first thing, you need to be aware of it. I would recommend getting a friend to take a photo of you from the side and just checking to see where your ear line is. If you have good posture, it should pretty much line up with your shoulder. If it's forward of the shoulder, then you've probably got a bit of forward head posture happening, but it's not the end of the world. This is a long-term game and it's something that I've been through a number of times now and each time I've managed to fix it and we're gonna get into the exercises shortly. But the second thing you can do is to not strengthen that position unknowingly. If you're in the gym and you're working out, then it's likely that a lot of the tight muscles in the front of your neck are probably engaging as you're doing pushing exercises, for example, like a bench press. And if you're noticing that your chin is going forward, you need to rectify that by pulling it backwards. That's something that we'll talk about later. And, and also other exercises like rows. Again, filming yourself is a great way to keep an eye on your form. And if you find that your chin is going forward, that's only gonna be strengthening these muscles and making the situation worse. So whilst rows is a great example, of something that we can do to strengthen our back and improve our posture. It's very important to be aware of what's going on with the neck whilst we're doing that exercise. So from all the time that we're spending either sitting at a desk working or looking at our phone with our head down, these muscles here at the front of the neck tend to get really tight and overactive. So the first thing we're gonna do is stretch those muscles. All right, I'm gonna whip my shirt off here so you can see the muscles that we're actually trying to get at. So the first culprit is the SCM, sternocleidomastoid. It's a big muscle that runs down the side of our neck here. You can see that as I turn my head, it's really quite prominent. Begins just behind the ear and inserts down into the sternum and the collarbone. So keeping the shoulders down is important to get a full range stretch here. So first thing we're gonna do is rotate the head to the opposite side of which you're stretching. And then we begin to lift the chin until you feel the stretch. Now you should be able to see by now, and I could feel it, that this muscle 
is quite tight and we're gonna hold for 30 seconds. You don't want it to be painful, obviously, you need to be able to relax. One of the key things with stretching is being able to breathe and being able to relax and signal to the body to release. So if you're tense and you're tight while you're stretching, you're not going to be getting the benefit. You're probably going to be making things worse. So only go as far as you can in a very relaxed state, being able to breathe. You might find that immediately, as soon as you go into this stretch, that you you find that you are taking shallow breaths and you're not able to fully expand your rib cage. So only go as far as you can, breathing slowly and deeply and being relaxed, holding for 30 seconds, and then we can switch to the other side. The second muscle in the neck that we're going to hit is the anterior scalene. So the anterior scalene can be found just here in this little soft pocket above the collarbone. It is really quite deep within the neck, so it's a tough one to get to. So in order to stretch that, we do the same thing, depressing the shoulder by placing your hand on the chest here and just pulling down slightly. Now, last time we rotated first, then we looked up. This time's a little bit different. We're going to bring the ear, this ear to this shoulder to stretch that side first before lifting the chin and looking up. So to stretch anterior scalene, ear to shoulder, slowly look up and we're looking, you might have to just change the angle a little bit. We're looking to find a stretch here of the muscle that runs into this little soft exposed gap here just above the collarbone. So initially you can make some small changes by rotating the chin around, up and down to find the ideal spot. But once you've found it, you want to hold that position. Don't change it for 30 seconds. Again, breathe deeply, try and stay relaxed. Hold for 30 seconds and then take a break and come back in. If you can't hold for 30 seconds, just begin with 15 seconds. If the situation is really bad, likely you'll only be able to hold for 10 seconds. That's okay, everyone's got to start somewhere expand it over time. Generally, I'll do these first thing in the morning when I'm really focused on making this a priority, I'll do it again at lunch and then I'll do it just before I go to bed. I think bang for buck, these are probably the two most important exercises out of this routine, but there's two more that are also really crucial. We also need a strengthening element, which is what the next exercise is. And this is a really simple one that you'll see in just about every video for forward head posture and it's chin tucks. So pretty self-explanatory, really. All we're going to be doing is doing reps of tucking the chin. First, before you do it, try and establish a good posture because we're trying to teach the body to be strong in the position that is ideal for our posture. So when you start out, you might find that your natural position is here. So first, sit up nice and tall, roll the shoulders back and down, try and lock the scapula down, and then we'll be doing repetitions up to 30 of just pulling the neck in. It's important with this exercise and any exercise you do, especially with your neck, is that you only train within a range of motion that you can without experiencing pain. So if you are getting any sharp pains, back off a bit, only work within a pain-free range of motion. If you are going to be successful at improving your posture, then it is going to take that consistent, gentle nudge of doing these exercises quite frequently. And I actually sit here whilst I'm editing or I'll take a quick break and I'll just do these stretches and exercises. And one thing that I'm in the habit of doing, it's almost unconscious now, is when I'm at a desk, I'm quite often opening my shoulders, really trying to pull back, leading with the thumb, tucking my chin, and just getting a stretch through the pec minor and stretching the front of the shoulder. And that's another little thing that you can add into this routine that is going to combat that rounded forward shoulder position, commonly called upper cross syndrome. And it's very common, especially for people that work at a desk. You know, there's something deeply satisfying about walking long distances. And I think that that's been ingrained within us over a really long period of time. The problem that modern humans are facing is that we have devices and computers that we're spending a lot of time looking at. So 
as good as walking can be. We really need to do some preparation work to undo and to rectify some of these muscle imbalances that really can become uh, causes of injury over a long period of time. You know, walking is something that can certainly help our posture. It can uh, improve our health and our well-being in general, but it can also exacerbate issues that are already there. So if you do notice that you have rounded shoulders and a forward head posture, that's not something unfortunately that's going to be fixed just by going on a hike. A lot of these exercises were shown to me by Kenneth Wally, he's one of my early mentors. He ran a business called Performance and Postures. And we actually did a pretty informative video in 2013, as a while back, it's kind of an old video, but there's some really good information in there in terms of the ideal kind of walking posture. And he's really the expert on this stuff. So if you want to see more on that, I would check out that video and his channel. The thing about this though, is that it is a long-term approach. It's a, it's a long game. So I've just added a 15 minute follow along video to my new program elements long game. And as well as that, it goes into the two other really common postural issues that we see in modern day lifestyle, which is upper cross syndrome. So basically rounding, forward rounding of the shoulders and lower cross syndrome, which is forward tilting of the hips. So if you're interested in checking out that, the link will be in the description. So I hope that's been helpful to you. If you have got some value out of the video, please hit the like button. And for another follow along routine that is designed to strengthen the weaker and smaller muscles in your back, check out this routine. I'll link it up here. I posted it last week and it's a really nice follow along that you can do 15 and 20 minutes and get that back nice and strong. That's about it for this video, guys. I'll see you on the summit.